hey everyone welcome back thank you for clicking this video what we'll be doing today is to drape a bodice pattern and we'll be doing both the front and the back of it and once we're done with the draping we'll be making a pattern out of it so please watch this video to the end and one important thing that i like to note when choosing a dress form for a draping project is that you want to make sure that it is close to your client measurement or if this majority of this project will be for you then you want to make sure that that dress form is close to your size also there are other methods that it can be used to achieve a close measurement by padding the dress form depending on the measurements you have but for today's tutorial the measurement that will be taken from the dress form would be from the top of the metal pad of this dress form to the beginning of the waistline here and we'll also be taking another measurement across the width of the dress form and from the largest part of it which is around the bust area so from the center from here going across to the side seam the next step for this is to take this measurement and we'll be using it to prepare our fabric the fabric prep that I will be doing includes cutting up the fabric. For the length measurement that we took from the dress room is 19 inches and we will be adding 2 inches to make it 21 and we are going to mark it all through like that. And the width of the fabric that we took was 10 1 fourth and we'll be adding 3 inches to it and we'll be measuring that across Cutting out the fabric in the center front, we have to decide where the center front would be. So we're using this part of the fabric, and we're going to mark one inches along the center front. I fold the one inch mark inwards and I'll press it down also. And do the same for the other side. So we have here our cutout with the allowance on it and the folded front like that and we start our placement from the metal part of the dress form just as we measured it and the pinning is done in a slanted way and it goes into the form and Now that I'm done with painting the center front, the next thing is to smooth the fabric towards the shoulder area. I am pinned that and I'm just going to walk my way to the shoulder to the beginning of the neckline there 
and do another pinning at the nape. To continue with the neckline, you see I have like this folded flap here. I'm just going to cut across it, up, downwards. Like that. I just trim it down more so that it releases the tension on the neckline. I'm just going to smooth from the center front towards the armhole here. You're not pulling the fabric, you're just smoothing it. And again, from the center front till it reaches the side, same here. Now that we're done with that, the next thing is to work on the side seam. With the side seam, you don't want to pull everything like that. You want to leave some remnant here for that. So, would work with the, with the bust. Again, you can just move it to make sure that there are no fabric standing up or anything. And then I'm pinning the side right now. Once you're doing it, you can see that you have this excess here that we can use to create our dart from the waistline to the bust area. Then, my dress form has a line here that shows me where I can place my dart. So I'm just going to follow that line and fill it with my hand and just shape out the dart like that. And then pin out the dart. I like to pin up the dart because I want to know, know like what amount of fabric I am working with. I can pin it in later on, but for the first take of it, I just like to pin it out. We are done with all of the paintings, right? So the next thing we want to do is that we'll be doing markings so that when we take it away from the dress form, we are not lost. We know where our neckline is. We know where our shoulder is, our arm hole and the side of it. So it just makes things clearer. I have here like this pen. It's for coloring, but it works well too on fabric. So from the center front, I'm just gonna mark my neckline while well feeling like there's a ridge in the dress form i can tell you where the neck is i'm gonna mark here and put points that would remind me where it is done with the shoulder now i'm going into the armhole that I have like a, a different line that is different from the one coming from the waist which will tell me the beginning of the dart and also I'm marking it on the other side of the leg then I'm continuing And this is what we have for the marking. So right now I'm just going to grade down the excess fabric around it so that it looks a bit nice. And I'm gonna be really fast. And after doing that, we we'll come to the shoulder here and we'll bring it to the front. Make sure it matches to the front. You can fold it in 
and fold in the excess like that and then you paint the shoulder We trim and clip our back neckline. Move from the back like that and pin it to the armhole. To another one like that. So you get to the side and I'm gonna fold this inwards. And then we pin our first side seam while making sure we have excess for the that that will be present on the center back now that we're done with the side that like that at the neck and then for we'll mark Trim the excess across, then snip. So laying out my front shirt garment and I'm going to start from the shoulder then the neckline so what I'm doing with this line is I'm just straightening it out So after drawing the whole thing, the next thing I'll be doing is that I'll be matching my back shoulder. You can do it either with the front shoulder too, but the, see, so I'm just making sure that they match. And if there is any difference, I can either add or deduct it. This is matching so after doing the shoulder then the armhole is not really necessary because um, they are of different sizes especially the front and the back the next one will be the side the side seams so I'm just gonna fold my back side seam and bring it to the front side seam and since the back is um, longer than the front one, so I'm just marking the adjustment on the front one. So, as it is, I'm just gonna use my ruler to just make that correct. For the tracing, I'll be using this carbon paper. There's the option of um, 
tracing paper but um, this one shows better than tracing paper and I have my tracing roll here I'm just going to place the the carbon paper underneath the neckline and the shoulder at once then I'm just gonna work my way around Once the tracing is done, I'm coming back again to redraw all of the lines. So I just finished cutting out my pattern and labeling them out. So guys, this is how you drape and trace and chew and cut out your pattern. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in my next tutorial. Bye.